here they are, our other beautiful MCs. Beautiful, beautiful. In case you haven't noticed, we all share something in common, which is that we're all vegan. Wow, bless you, bless And we you. all love Don McLean, who is setting up backstage right now. So you will have to endure us for just a few moments while the band sets up. Uh, does anybody want to share a story of the best vegetarian meal they ever had, or <laughs> how they ended up becoming vegetarian, or why they love animals? Well, one of, one of the things one of my friends said to me the other day, who's vegan, that I thought was, made, he made such a great point. He said, have you ever met an unhappy vegan? And I thought, no, I haven't. You know, it's, we're putting such love out into the world, into the environment, that we're just really showing, showing our happiness and our love. I've never met an unhappy vegan. Have you guys? No, that's true. Right, <laughs> you're right. There's, they just have a, a wonderful energy to them. Yes. Yeah. I became vegetarian many, many years ago, but then really started getting active in the animal movement. I personally have an animal organization that does large-scale rescues. An unbelievable. Thank you. Kristen works uh, with us. And um, for me, it was about watching an undercover fur video. And when I saw it, what I saw was happening because I loved animals my entire life. And yet, I found, found myself very surprised that I didn't have any idea what was really happening to them. And I had no idea what was really happening to animals. They just existed, and I thought they were wonderful, and life was grand. But when I saw this on the screen, I was so taken aback. It was as if somebody had kicked me in the stomach, and I doubled over, and I just started sobbing uncontrollably. But it was that moment, that very poignant moment, that I said, my life is changed forever. And from that moment forward, my diets changed. I bought a new car to get rid of my leather interior. I threw out all the leather out of my closet. I went through all of my cabinets and found every single product that had been tested on animals, and I threw that out, and on wow. and on and on. And so now my life is so enriched and so incredible because of this relationship that I have with animals now, and it's extended itself into Ed, into the whole green world, not just with animals, but in, in the with the environment. Beautiful, beautiful. Anybody else want to hear Don McLean and the Don McLean band? We all like. <laughs> And they need a few minutes, as most everyone here knows, to set up. And I am going to talk about being a vegetarian. I just want to say a little bit about Don. Don McLean discovered me years ago. He discovered me at, a, at a, the Troubadour back in 1972. I, before I got St. Elsewhere, any of that, this wonderful man, this wonderful musician, who was a big star at that time, saw me play the Troubadour, and he thought I was amusing. And so he got me management, what have you, and I went on the road. And I opened for him and many other acts, thanks to Don McLean. Can we have a big thanks for Don McLean about that? I met him in 72, 1970. You asked about being a vegetarian. That's when I stopped eating red meat in 1970. I became a vegetarian in 1970, and I haven't had red meat since. I, thank you. I strayed for a while. I was one of those people who's eating fish for a while. I wised up on that. That doesn't work for me anymore and has not for years. I, I'm a pure vegan now, and I've been doing that for quite a while. Thank you. But I started this journey in 1970, and I'm 62 years old, and I rode up from Laurel and Ventura to Mulholland this morning, as I do every morning. So when they say uh, you don't have any strength if you're a vegetarian, that's not the way it is around my household. Uh, um, I feel very good. And as I said, I'm 62, and so it's a good diet. And I also became aware, not just what, how it might benefit me, uh, Kristen and others, but how it benefited the animals, the factory farms and these chickens and these hogs, the way they are, their whole life in one position for most of their life, they can't even move. It's not right. It really isn't right. Factory farms are bad. They're bad for the animals and they're bad for the environment. You go to a lot of rivers throughout the Midwest and you see what's happening there. They're really all these, uh, this incredible amount of nitrogen and these uh, pollutants and what have you and the, the kind of manure and the, what have you that comes from a farm. They try to contain it in these big ponds and pools. It doesn't work and it gets in the waterways. It gets in the groundwater. It's bad for the environment. Listen to Bobby Kennedy Jr.'s talk about that and he'll tell you in no uncertain terms how these big factory farms are despoiling the commons. It's very old law that you're not allowed to despoil the commons. That's what they're doing. They're polluting the water, the groundwater and the rivers and streams. But I've been doing this since 1970. That's when I started. It's uh, 42 years later and I feel pretty good. So I'll try to get through this without crying, but 
I'm already starting. So I think that, you know, um, what's important for me is to try to pull the thread and see where these things lead and really look for myself and have people decide for themselves. My mom bought laundry detergent, so I bought laundry detergent. And one day, when I'm pouring it in, I thought, that's neon blue. And where does it go? Well, and then you start asking questions and comparing, you know. And then I start looking at what, you know, factory farming does to our land. Well, also genetically modified crops are doing horrible things. So it's just an investigation for me because I find that, you know, I love the story where someone went to Gandhi and said, hey, would you tell my kid to stop eating sugar? And he said, you come back in two weeks. So they came back to the same spot in two weeks, and Gandhi goes, stop eating sugar. And she's like, you know, I was here two weeks ago, dude. Like, you know, what was with all that? And he said, well, I was still eating sugar. <laughs> I was out traveling, and I'd gotten some plastic thing and was throwing it in the trash. That's really not that different, because that's putting oil back in earth. It's not my backyard, but it's somebody's. Our lives are so busy, and I'm doing Twitter and Facebook and married and laundry and what have you. But to just my thing is to just kind of slow down and look at the actions of my day and try to see what I'm supporting. You know, where were my clothes made? Who made these? How do they live? To think of the other guy that we don't see. And that's, of course, the ultimate in veganism. I, I think what everybody is saying, and I, and I think what's, what's true for all of us, as, not just in this room, but as human beings, at some point you stop and try to figure out whether it's your relationship or some other part of your life, whether or not you're being really true to what you believe and what you want to stand for. Um, and we don't, we're all hypocrites. We're all imperfect. We all make compromises all the time. And we're all at some point along uh, a path. Some, some may feel like they're further and some may be further behind, but as long as you feel like you're moving in a direction of being more true to who you really feel like you are, I think you're getting there. Uh, for me, that happened. Um, uh, a seminal moment uh, in my life was uh, in the early 80s. Uh, my wife and I were at a uh, fairground in uh, Maryland. There was a little pen of pigs and for some months, my fiance at that time had decided that she really wanted to try to be vegetarian. She did the typical things. She eliminated, eliminated red oh. meat. And, uh, and I had been resisting, uh, as typically as men do, and even though I knew in my heart that for us it, it was the right thing. And I saw these little pigs in this pen, and the little baby piglets looked like little puppies. And I was like, oh, God, you suck. I was bending down, and I put my hand up to the thing, and one came over and snuffled me. And my wife leaned down right next to me, and very softly said, he still eats you. <laughs> and I swear this little pig turned and looked at me like, and for me, I realized I can't do, I can't do this anymore. Uh, and, and, and so on that day, I stopped that part of it. Now, before we wrap this up, I, there, I know there are a lot of animal people in this audience there. I know there are a lot of music fans. We've had a lot of celebrities here today. But I looked out in the audience a minute ago, and I saw somebody who is one of the real giants of this movement. Uh, I didn't know he was going to be here, but he's an old friend. And when I say giant, I mean giant. Alex, stand up, take a bow. Alex Pacheco. <laughs> Wow. This is a guy that has uh, seen stuff and done stuff that, as much as we all love animals, we would not have the stomach to do. So he's, he's one of the, the heroes of, of all of this. So I thank you for, for uh, listening to my story, and I think they're just about ready, and I know it's going to be great. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks for coming, Alex. Thank you, all of you, for being vegans, vegetarian. God bless you. <laughs>